Hey, what's up, hello, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new, my name is Kayla, and today I'm sharing with you guys some of my favorite outfits from 2020. Hey guys, hello, I'm so glad to have you here. My name is Kayla, as I said. Today, I want to share with you guys some of my favorite outfits from this past year. My style has changed a lot in the last 12 months. I think if we were to go back and look at what I was wearing back in January and February, I would I would definitely say that my sense of style was more classified in the sort of hipstery, like, yeah, hipstery sort of vibes. I very much was into like plaids and the flat top wide brim hats, which by the way, I'm still into and I wear all the time. Now, I think that I've finally settled into an aesthetic after trying out so many this year and if you guys have been around for a while you would have seen me try out so many different aesthetics this year i tried out the visco girl aesthetic i tried out the cottage core aesthetic the academia both light and dark academia um, aesthetics and there are still many many more i want to try out in the future i think now after trying out so many different aesthetics and discovering some new people during this time I finally settled on what, at least for now, makes me excited and empowered, which is a sort of mix between three different aesthetics, which would be sort of cottage core, romantic sort of style, academia style, and just straight up vintage. I think I'm never gonna fit into one of those categories, but mixing the three of them together makes me feel amazing and i do think that there is a way to do that so if you guys want to see me do a video where i mix all three of those aesthetics together let me know down below i would absolutely love to do that because i do think that is how my style could best be described when speaking in terms of aesthetics now before we jump into this video don't forget to pause and go down below hit the subscribe button it's totally free and i'll let you know when i upload new videos which is every single monday unless i have a crazy weekend and then they go up on wednesday this is going to be the last video of 2020 which means i will be taking next week off just to spend time with family during the holidays and now without further ado let us jump in so outfit number one i kind of put these in sort of chronological order starting from the beginning of the year to now so that not only can i point out to you my favorite outfits throughout the year but also we can sort of see a little bit of the style transformation so first and foremost is my pink and green sort of hipster grunge outfit now i'm a huge fan of styling pink and green together and this outfit makes me feel so cool so sticking with those hipster vibes i have on that flat top wide brim hat that is actually from nasty girl i bought it many many years ago at this point and as i do say whenever i hear some things about companies that i've shopped for in the past that um you know new information has come out about i want to let you guys know there has been unfortunately some pretty not okay things coming out about nasty girl they are owned by i think the company that owns boohoo which we're also going to be talking about later in this video and apparently they have very unethical working standards for their workers which is obviously a problem and hence i do not support this company anymore but i did buy this hat maybe three or four years ago at this point and the best thing you can do after buying something from a company once you learn something not great about them is to just continue to wear it until it falls apart and then not shop from them again anyway <laughs> that hat then i have with it a green sweater that is it's been all over my like youtube channel lately i absolutely love this sweater and it's actually a couple of years old at this point i didn't really wear it when i first got it but it's sort of fallen into the realm of my fashion sense a lot more lately and so this green sweater it sort of became a really big part of my wardrobe sort of at the beginning of this year um and it is just from target i think it's from the a new day brand very comfortable super soft i paired with it a pair of thrifted pink trousers like hot pink trousers that were also originally from target but i did pick them up at the thrift store and then a thrifted vintage jacket and i think it's interesting that most of the outfits that i'm going to be talking to you guys about today do incorporate at least one vintage piece in them which i think speaks volumes for how integral vintage fashion becomes in my wardrobe and as a part of how i like to dress with that i also paired the oldest pair of shoes in my closet which are my black booties that were also from target i think that this outfit is a great example of that sort of hipster grunge style that i was really really into at the end of last year and at the beginning of this year and to date this is still an outfit i wear all the time and i think that this is still a cool way that i can incorporate this style into the sort of 
aesthetic that I more closely identify with today, if that makes sense. Moving on to the second outfit, this has a very similar silhouette. This I'm calling my retro Rugrats outfit. So the top is from Target. It's just a plain tank top. This was a go-to outfit for me in the summer months. Um, while it does get quite hot here in the summer, I, you know, was inside a lot <laughs> and it's cold in my house. So wearing pants was not an issue for me. These are some thrifted pants. I picked these up on Poshmark and I do believe they were originally from Primark. They do have a little bit of a weird fit, but somehow I managed to ignore that and continue to wear them anyway. I also paired with it this thrifted oversized denim like short sleeve button up shirt this shirt i picked up at a goodwill right before lockdown happened so in february or march and it is such a staple in my wardrobe it's a perfect piece for layering whether over or under another shirt and it is just the best it's a great oversized fit and this became one of my favorite outfits to wear in the summer again the same hat and shoes are paired with it and i remember when i first put this outfit together i was so excited i ran downstairs and was like oh my gosh mom and dad is this outfit not the most me and they absolutely felt the same way i did the same amount of excitement i was feeling and they knew from the minute they saw it like yes that is a quintessentially you outfit Okay, so for outfit three, now many of you I'm sure know that the 70s and 60s fashion became really, really popular over the summer. And honestly, I think it's kind of been really popular for the last couple of years. So this outfit for me was sort of like an homage to, and I know they wore these like types of silhouettes also in like the 80s and 90s, but it felt very sort of like go-go type of like, 70s and 60s to me. I think it was a nice stepping stone in the right direction of like vintage fashion, but I don't think that it was necessarily my aesthetic. Nonetheless, I absolutely love the silhouette. I love that it's sort of like these floaty arms on the sleeve, and then it sort of plays homage to that in the skirt with the sort of like, almost like a peplum type of situation on the skirt. I'm not really sure what you call that besides just calling it pleating, um, but it had like this sort of twirly bit on the bottom. But overall, the silhouette of this outfit and the sort of aspirational vintage quality that it holds, I think were really important for my sort of fashion journey throughout this year. This paper boy hat with this white floaty shirt with this brown polka dotted flouncy skirt and just some white tennis shoes was one of my favorite outfits this year. The skirt thrifted out of Goodwill and the shirt was originally from Misguided, but I also thrifted that on Poshmark. Okay, this fourth outfit can only be described as my architectural digest outfit. Why I say that is because of this incredible sweater. So actually when I put this sweater on, my mom said to me, you know, when I was a kid in like the 80s, I had a sweater just like that. And that sort of, again, reinvigorated my love for 80s fashion. And honestly, this sweater is just so interesting. It's been featured in a lookbook over here on the channel, and it's been featured, I think, on my Instagram? So this is one of my favorite sweaters ever. I just think it looks so cool, so posh, so professional. And while it's all of those things, I also think that it's kind of timeless. It's basically just a basic brown sweater with some interesting architecture and movement going on. Paired with this sweater, I put on one of my favorite skirts that I thrifted this year. I got it on Poshmark and it is just this really incredible dark academia inspired a-line shaped it comes right to the knee just like just under the knee actually um plaid skirt it's almost checkered i think more than plaid but nonetheless i'm obsessed with this skirt this year was the year of skirts for me i found three of my favorite skirts and made one and so this year has definitely been the year where skirts have become a really, really important part of my aesthetic and my fashion sense. But this one, like I said, I got on Poshmark. It was originally from Banana Republic and it is so cute. So this outfit is actually one I put together over the summer and it was sort of my attempt at a modern day Cinderella outfit. So this was the Cinderella scrubbing the floors type of outfit, not necessarily the Cinderella in a ball gown type of outfit, though that might be a fun one to recreate as well. Nonetheless, I really, really, really fell in love with this outfit. I found myself outfit repeating the heck out of this one. I wore it so, so much in the summer, and this was very much the time period where I was playing the most with the cottagecore sort of soft girl aesthetic. Now, this outfit 
is this really, really beautiful like powder blue it's a sheer shirt it's quite oversized i thrifted this at a goodwill i think or salvation army i don't remember and that's weird because i remember where i buy everything it was quite an oversized size it was originally from target i do believe and it just was so flouncy and like light and fun it has a sort of like frilly sleeve detail which is what actually initially drew me into buying the shirt in the first place um and like i was saying it was quite oversized that is definitely going to be a staple piece in my wardrobe for a, for a long long time to come and it also might be something as my style sort of evolves that i might tailor i might bring in a little bit because as i said it's quite oversized the skirt i paired with it is also very much cottage core um this is an incredible like chocolatey brown like shin length tiered prairie skirt i thrifted this at a goodwill as well several years ago now but i way underutilized it until this year and i wore this skirt to the point where it now has holes in it which i think i'll be able to mend but it does have holes in it now because i just wore it so much and i'm so clumsy <laughs> and i undoubtedly probably sat down and got it stuck on a stick or fell down the stairs <laughs> like who knows so there are a couple of tiny holes in there but i think that they're not beyond repair so i am going to try to repair them but i'm really obsessed with this skirt and then also this was sort of like the reinvention of the hair ribbon for me um i started wearing ribbons in my hair again this is something i definitely did when i was in high school maybe from time to time i would wear like flower clips and bow clips and all of that stuff and i sort of took a left turn and was like yeah grunge 80s and 90s punk rock <laughs> just like definitely walked away from that type of fashion for a little bit but man i absolutely fell in love with hair accessories again this year and i think in large part because i started a hair accessories company hair accessories have just become very 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 important to me says a girl who's literally not wearing any today <laughs> but anyway um yeah this this was a big moment for me with like hair ribbons okay so this next outfit i'm calling my perfect picnic outfit so this is one that i think is actually a pretty good combination of my cottagecore punk um soft girl sort of vibes when i first started looking into cottagecore i felt like it was very much pastel colors and then the more i started diving into it i was like no this is like earth tones this is like very neutral so that's why i keep adding like the soft girl part to that because the summer i was wearing a lot of blue and so i was wearing this blue shirt in this outfit it's like this blue vintage grandma tank top sort of button-up collared shirt that i absolutely love and I think is also going to be a solid basic in my wardrobe because not only do I really love collars, but I really love that sort of like vintage grandma vibe. Classy grandma though, you know? Not like those ugly grandma sweaters, which is a vibe and is a look that can be cute for some people. It just is not really my aesthetic, if you know what I mean. Anyway, so this tank top is a really lovely sort of almost a denim -y blue, but it's made out of the most supple, lush, soft cotton material i've never felt anything so soft and it also has some really beautiful like floral details on the collar and a tiny bit of lace which i think is very very cute i love the small details and pieces like that i thrifted it at a goodwill and then i ended up pairing it with this like mini skirt pinafore now this is the one and only mini skirt i have held on to in my wardrobe because i like to wear it with tights and in the summer i'm I love it enough that I'll just put on a pair of bike shorts with it and, you know, move along with myself. I love this this mini skirt. I have worn it on Instagram so many times. It is just a black skater skirt that is made into a pinafore, so it's got some black straps that go over your shoulders, and I'm in love with it. It is so cute, and it kind of is just sort of playing homage to, you know, my hipster Black Veil Brides, My Chemical Romance Days, which, by the way, Beside Jesus and my family, my chemical romance saved my life, so. Okay, so I'm literally editing this video and I just wanted to pop on to say that I absolutely still wear, like, my chemical romance and Black Veil Brides 
sort of concert outfits in my everyday life from time to time. It's just not as regularly as it used to be. That used to be sort of like more of the focus of my wardrobe, whereas now I'm sort of transitioning into like a more elevated, I'm no longer like a young teenager type of vibe, if that makes sense. But also, that being said, my everyday makeup is entirely inspired by Gerard Way's makeup in the Helena music video. Just like red, red eyeshadow for days. I literally wear red eyeshadow when I'm wearing full face of makeup. Um, which I do wear makeup most days, but I literally wear like red eyeshadow on the outer corner and then underneath my eye. And it's entirely Gerard Way inspired. So, you know, MCR saved my life. No joke. So yeah, it just sort of, I don't know, brings me back to those days when I was wearing like more punk rocky type of outfits, which as I previously stated, was something I was still doing at the beginning of this year. So it's really not that long ago, it was maybe like 10 months ago that I was wearing these types of outfits. But I loved pairing these two pieces together because I felt like it was youthful and fun and just really sweet. And it worked really great for just a cute picnic photo. Okay, so this next outfit is where you're going to see two of my favorite things that I purchased this year of all time. So first thing is first, this outfit is featuring a headband that I made myself. Absolutely love it. It's just a really light plaid, very much inspired by the light academia aesthetic. At this point in the year, I was very much enjoying academia style. So this headband is sort of playing homage to an otherwise not necessarily like academia outfit. It definitely has like sort of vibes of academia but it's not because i'm wearing a t-shirt but i'm also wearing a collared shirt and i felt like this was sort of like a maybe it could be like a casual schoolgirl outfit so maybe it could be like a light or medium academia type of look i don't know but anyway moving on down i'm wearing a t-shirt it's just a harry potter t-shirt i've worn several times on the channel at this point i think and it is from the small business called The Bookish Shop. It's actually no longer available, but it is definitely my most worn t-shirt, I think, at this point. But actually, the two other pieces to this outfit are two of my absolute favorite things that I purchased this year. First, the shirt that is underneath the t-shirt, which is a Harry Potter embroidered Peter Pan collared white button-up. It is gorgeous. First of all, it's from Hot Topic. Second of all, I didn't think it was going to fit me when I got in. I was thinking to myself, oh, you know, this is hot topic. I should probably like go several sizes too big. And I think I ended up going for just an extra large and, or a large, one of the two, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I was very nervous it wasn't gonna fit because I failed to remember that hot topic is in teen sizes. The second one is the vintage tan skirt that I have absolutely raved over on this channel in so many videos, so I won't bore you guys with all of the details, but essentially it is a either actual vintage or vintage inspired. It was marketed as a vintage piece. I bought it secondhand on Poshmark and it was marketed as a 1940s vintage A-line skirt. And um, I, uh, I love it. It's my perfect skirt. Beside the one I made myself, there is no skirt I like more. It's tan, it's got buttons, and it's got pockets, and you really can't go wrong with that. It is the absolute most perfect fit on me. It's got some elastic in the back, which helps give it a little bit of give. And then also, it just has that really stunning vintage silhouette. It's really soft material, and I really recommend finding your perfect skirt if it's something that is possible for you. Putting this whole thing together, was the moment that I was like, this is the aesthetic I wanna go for, vintage. <laughs> like I like the earth tone vintage things. And I really just like found that aesthetic and then stuck with it, sort of ran with it and have been just sort of altering it and trying out different things here and there, but with a similar vibe. For this outfit, I was sort of trying to play with like the whole idea of jewel tone academia. So I took this green sort of jewel toned foresty green sweater and paired over it a thrifted silk, like checkered plaid top. It's a little tight, but I love the effect that it gave. And this was sort of what reinvigorated me to really try out like sweater vests and to experiment more with layering. Now, I've always been a huge fan of layering and just mixing prints and just really bold, crazy out there fashion, but 
I, this was like the moment that I was like, you can put a tank top over a sweater and that's fashion. <laughs> I guess I just hadn't really thought about doing that before, but this was one of those like sort of moments where I was like, yeah, I love layering a lot more than I let myself think I did. And then it sort of became like a thing where I was like, how many layers can I put on today? <laughs> so especially now that we're getting into the colder months, I've absolutely been loving just playing around with a ton of different layering. And then of course I paired my favorite skirt with this outfit as well. And I just loved how vintage and cool yet modern, it was sort of a cool collection of vintage and modern put together. And I thought that this absolutely embodied my aesthetic and what I want my aesthetic to look like in the future. Speaking of things that I want my aesthetic to look for in the future, circle skirts. Oh my gosh, why didn't anyone tell me how beautiful circle skirts are? First of all, circle skirts are a classic 1950s silhouette. They are so freaking pretty. They're modest, they're flowy, they're fun to twirl around in, and I just absolutely love them. They're so flattering, and I just adore them. So again, with that green sweater, I paired that with a um, button up collared shirt. So see, look at that. Another fun way to layer. Um, so instead of putting something over top of the sweater, underneath it, I put a button up like tank top collared shirt that I actually found in my garage. It, and it's really become like a staple part of my life. And then the showstopper, the skirt, that I handmade. I actually made a whole video about making the circle skirt. You guys can check that out in the card. This circle skirt is the most beautiful thing I think I own. It is handmade by me, which makes it all the more special. I made it out of a $4 thrifted sheet and I'm in love with it. I have decided actually since making that skirt that I wanna make a ton more just in like more neutral colors that will work for everyday wear because you know a green and red and white plaid skirt only really has a lifespan of like a month or two and then after that you're not really gonna wear it outside of you know the christmas season so this was definitely a favorite outfit for me not only because i'm obsessed with every single piece individually and together but because it really really ignited my love for circle skirts and also I've never been so proud of something I've made. Okay, so this outfit I'm calling my Jewel Toad in Academia outfit. So again, we're featuring that Harry Potter Peter Pan collared shirt that is from Hot Topic. And then with it, I have on three other pieces that are all thrifted. So I have a pair of Mary Jane heeled shoes. It was such a mistake to wear those in my backyard to take this photo and to do some of the videography of this outfit. But you know what? I did it. We survived. Here we are. The shoes are still alive and thriving, but they are just this really beautiful sort of like patent leather. I'm sure they're vegan, so like plastic, but um, they are secondhand and they're just like re this really beautiful like wine red color, a color that I really have been loving this year. Also in that same color is the cardigan that I thrifted. I got this at a Goodwill. It was such a good price. I think I got it for like half off. So it was like two fifty or $3 or something. Just really comfortable, very soft. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love it. And I, and this is sort of the reason why I call this outfit sort of like jewel toned academia, because there are like those really beautiful, bright, like jewel toned wine reds that are, you know, in the shoe and then in the cardigan. And then the academia part comes in at the bottom half of the outfit where I am wearing these really fun, they're a little bit too big, but you know, I'm making them work, um, plaid trouser pants. These are also thrifted and they are just so comfortable. I mean, why wear sweatpants when you can wear these kinds of pants that basically feel like sweatpants, but make you look like you put like a little bit more effort into your outfit? That's my mentality wear sweatpants if you want to, but I personally like to get dressed up every day, as I think I've said a couple of times on the channel or even on Instagram. So for me, this is like a really great alternative to sweatpants. They're just a really lovely, soft material. They've got an elastic waistband, so it feels like sweatpants, you know? Okay, and then the absolute last outfit of this video is another one including a handmade piece by me. I wore this one in the fall. It was one that I absolutely loved. And again, it features that freaking Harry Potter shirt. I told you guys, I love that shirt. So for this outfit, this is actually sort of like a costumey look, but it's not because like the outfit without the witch hat is definitely an outfit I would wear in regular life. You know, I don't generally speaking walk around wearing a conical hat but you know 
you could, I guess, if you wanted. Anyway, <laughs> I wore that Harry Potter shirt, and then over top, I wore this really incredible handmade tank top that I made out of this really beautiful fall plaid material. Now, it kind of sits on the line between a like caramel colored brown and an orange. I'm really not sure what the color is. I absolutely love this tank top. I wore it, again, so, so often. Then I paired with it a black prairie skirt that I thrifted from a Goodwill as well. Actually, not all that long ago, only a few months ago. Um, I think I got it on my first trip back to the thrift store, which happened to be the thrifting for Dark Academia pieces, I think. I really loved the silhouette of this outfit. And again, it was a fun way to sort of play with the sort of vintage cottage core meets academia meets earth tones i don't know i'm a hot mess <laughs> that was a very long video but i hope you guys enjoyed these are my i think 11 favorite outfits from the year of 2020 i hope you guys are all doing well staying safe and my heart and prayers go out to all of you guys especially with the holidays just around the corner and with so so many people not being able to go home i'm so blessed that i you know live with my family so I get to be with them for the holidays because, you know, we live together. Um, but that is just not the reality for a lot of people. And some people have at risk family members. Some people have lost family members. So um, if that is you, my heart and my prayers go out to you. I can't even imagine. I love you guys also so much. This is, like I said, the last video of the year for me. So I will catch you guys in 2021. And let's all look forward to a brighter, better, happier year. Don't forget it costs absolutely nothing to be kind, so be kind to yourself and others. Bye.